It is now April of 1898, and the United States of America and Spain go to war. It was 27 years ago when the Franco-Prussian War ended. If you remember from my first video, it was the Spanish succession question that was the final straw that started the Franco-Prussian War. This next phase of the 95 Years' War is known as the Spanish-American War. This war was fought for a very short time, about 10 weeks, but it's not called the 10 Weeks' War. It's fought between the United States and the Kingdom of Spain. It is significant in this timeline, the 95 Years' War, because of the territories that fall under control or dominance of the United States in the Pacific region. The main reason for the start of the war was the United States getting involved for the fight for independence of Cuba from colonial rule by Spain. Spain is ruled by Queen Maria Cristina, who was regent for King Alfonso XIII, meaning ruling in his stead because he was a young child. Yes, I understand that Cuba is not in the Pacific, but Cuba is why the war between the U.S. and Spain is started. It was the newspaper owners, Joseph Pulitzer, and especially William Randolph Hearst, that encouraged war with Spain to free the Cuban people. The press encouraging war? The Cuban people had been fighting for their independence from Spain unsuccessfully for quite a long time. President William McKinley of the United States, who was against war with Spain, was pers persuaded to be for the war when the armored cruiser, the USS Maine, blew up in Havana Harbor, which is in Cuba. It was determined at that time that it was a Spanish anti-ship mine that had caused the explosion. 251 men were killed aboard the Maine. On April 20th of 1898, President McKinley signed a joint congressional resolution demanding Spain withdraw from Cuba. This resolution also authorized the President to use military force to help Cuba gain their independence. In response, Spain severed diplomatic relations with the United States on April 21st of 1898. Also on the 21st, the U.S. Navy began a blockade of Cuba. This happens again far into the future, but that's another story. On, on April 23rd, Spain said it would declare war if the U.S. invaded its territory. On April 25th, Congress said that a state of war between the U.S. and Spain existed but then backdated it, the declaration, to April 21st, the day that the blockade of Cuba had begun. Guess that made the blockade legal? Anyways, the United States then sent an ultimatum to Spain demanding that it surrender control of Cuba. Spain did not reply soon enough. The United States just assumed that Spain had ignored the ultimatum and so the war begins. The U.S. Army's regulars and volunteers commanded by General William Shafter, which included Theodore Roosevelt and his first volunteer cavalry, the Rough Riders, landed on the coast east of Santiago, Cuba. Meanwhile, in the Western Pacific, there were Philippine nationals that had also been fighting for their independence from Spain for years. The U.S. said that they would help them gain their independence too. So, on May 1st of 1898, Commodore George Dewey led a U.S. Naval Squadron 
into Manila Bay in the Philippines and surprised the Spanish fleet there. They then destroyed the anchored Spanish fleet. Only seven American seamen were wounded. By August, Manila was occupied by U.S. troops, and Manila is the capital of the Philippines. Back in Cuba, the remaining Spanish Caribbean fleet under Admiral Pascual Severa was located in Santiago Harbor in Cuba. The U.S. forces slowly advanced on the city of Santiago, trying to force Admiral Severa's fleet out of the harbor. Admiral Severa led his squadron out of Santiago Bay on July 3rd and tried to escape to the west along the coast. The fleet was either destroyed or beached by the U.S. fleet. Santiago was surrendered to General Safter on July 17th, thus effectively ending the brief but momentous war. With the help of the Cuban nationals, who had been fighting for their independence for years, they were a critical part of the fight for the victory over Spain. Spain had colonies in the Pacific other than the Philippines, including uh, Guam. The Spanish sued for peace and the fighting stopped on August 12th of 1898. So in 10 short weeks, the United States had defeated a European power. The war officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Paris on December 10th of 1898. This treaty allowed for U.S. temporary control of, of Cuba, and Spain gave up ownership of Puerto Rico as well as Guam and the Philippine Islands. The giving up of the Philippine Islands involved a payment of $20 million to Spain, and that's about a half a billion dollars in today's money, by the U.S to cover the cost of infrastructure that was owned by Spain in the Philippines. By the way, the United States really screwed up the liberation of both Cuba and of the Philippines. They did not include the Cuban nationals or the Filipino nationals in the treaties that the U.S. negotiated with Spain. And I feel this is a well-hidden disaster of history for the U.S especially a disaster for both the Cuban people and the Philippine people. Far more Cubans and Filipinos die after the U.S. takes control than during the war. Sadly, these people are not included in the count body count above. This is, a, this is a story I'm going to cover on another day. Because it's interesting, the total deaths told combined for the Spanish-American War was 18,158 people. This taking of the Philippines and Guam by the United States made it necessary to station troops and naval forces in both places, as well as air forces, after the plane is invented in 1903, of course. These military forces, especially on Guam and the Philippines, will be directly involved in the 95 years war later on. In my next video, I'll be going north of the South Pacific a, and a conflict between Russia and Japan, the Sino-Russian War or the Japanese-Russian War. Yes, there is a connection. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button down below. Click on the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time a video comes out. Share this with a friend if you think they would be interested. If you want to see any of my previous episodes, I will try to leave some links in the comments below. Thank you so much and we'll see you next week. This is World War II by Mike W. The History of the 95 Years War.